Warning, this show contains scenes that some viewers may find confusing. Initial episodes may be somewhat confusing. The plot is all over the place. It's confusing, but interesting? Things happen so quickly, and sometimes you can't understand what happened. This season left me more confused by its ending than anything else. Leaves the audience too confused by not revealing enough. Mind-bending at times, and confusing. That's right, we're talking about Spring 2023's knockout anime, Heavenly Delusion, based on the manga by Masakusa Ishiguro. And boy, was it great. But boy, was it confusing. Luckily for Venny, because I am such a goddess, um, I have broken down everything that happened in season one, and we are here to explain everything. This is everything you need to know about Heavenly Delusion season one. Just a quick warning, while there are no intentional spoilers here, we will be speculating, making connections, and talking about some missed parts from the manga that could potentially spoil you, so you've been warned. So we're gonna break things down one by one, starting with what's going on in the outside world with Kiriko and Maru. What do we know? It's been 15 years since an unprecedented disaster completely destroyed modern civilization. We follow Kiriko and Maru as they traverse and try to survive in what is now Japan fallen in disarray. As they travel, our duo is on guard for bandits and other shady people that have taken advantage of the lawlessness. But most of all, they are wary of man-eaters, also known as Hiroko. Man-eaters differ in shape, size, and strength, and some even have unique abilities. They are also immortal. Not many of them exist, but they can sustain physical damage and be put in a near-death state and never die. They only appear to be dead, but may eventually return to life. Mm -hmm. So what do we know about the Great Disaster? There are three theories that Juichi shares in episode 9, which, knowing how this anime works, there could be clues to what really happened in each of these. Theory number one, the Asteroid Impact Theory. Before the Great Disaster, some people were highly concerned about the discovery of an asteroid approaching Earth on a large elliptical orbit. Given the scale of the disaster, the theory that such an asteroid collided with Earth is a convincing one. Theory number two, the Alien Invasion Theory. The oddly shaped man-eating creatures that appeared after the Great Disaster are theorized by some to have come from space. And strange flying humanoid shapes were observed by many people before the Great Disaster. Theory number three, the War Theory. There is a rumor that somewhere in Japan was subject to a terrorist attack before the Great Disaster. This eventually turned into a war in which some kind of special weapon was used. Continuing on, what do we know about Maru? Maru is 15 years old and is on a journey to find a place called Heaven. Maru was born the same year as the Great Disaster. He grew up in a big room with kids, but then the adults took the kids and scattered. The adult that was leading them eventually got killed, and then Maru and the other kids got absorbed into a big vigilante group. Eventually one day, a woman, Mikura, showed up and took Maru and taught him how to kill man-eaters. Mikura treated Maru coldly and used to look at him like an object, but eventually she showed up on Kiriko's step with Maru, but died almost immediately from the disease. Mikura gave Kiriko her gun and told Kiriko to use it to protect Maru and bring him to heaven. While Maru has no idea where heaven is, he knows he's supposed to inject someone with the same face as him with the medicine he's been carrying around. And they say everyone can be saved when he does this. Maru has special abilities in that he's extremely strong and a crazy skilled fighter. He also has the Maru Touch, or AKA Fatal, Fatal dive, dive, in which if he concentrates as he touches a man-eater, he can reach into them and crush or kill their core which is essentially the only thing that can kill them, at least that we know of at this time. Then what do we know about Kiriko? Kiriko's background is really complicated in that she is really a boy named Haruki. Haruki and his sister Kiriko grew up in an orphanage in a community that raced electro carts to keep people entertained. Kiriko was a prominent driver there. However, one day a man-eater showed up on the race course, but only Haruki saw it, so he tried to fight it himself hoping to win the approval of his older brother-like figure, Robin Inazaki, who also grew up in the orphanage. Haruki, however, didn't stand a chance against the man-eater and almost got consumed by it when Kiriko showed up and tried to save him. The last thing Haruki saw was his sister over his half-eaten body in despair before he passed out. The next thing we know, Haruki wakes up, but in the body of Kiriko. Haruki's brain was transplanted into Kiriko's body, but he still retains all of his own memories. We do learn later in the season that Kiriko's memories possibly still remain in her body as well. 
Obviously, Haruki went into shock, unable to understand how Kiriko died since he last saw her alive. Eventually, Haruki left the orphanage to find Robin, who left shortly after the accident, and the doctor who performed the brain transplant. Rumors about the doctor were going around at the time saying he was secretly researching man-eaters and doing human experiments. Thus, Haruki, now going by the name Kiriko, believes there was some kind of foul play at work. The rumor going around the area when Kiriko left was that Kiriko ran over her little brother during the race and killed him. Five years later, Odd Jobs Kiriko gets hired to protect Maru and take him to heaven. And while their main objective is to find heaven, which both Kiriko and Maru have no idea where it's located or what it is, Kiriko is also looking for Robin and the doctor as they travel. Kiriko doesn't have any special powers, but they do use the Kiro Beam, the gun they got from Mikura and they're a very good shot. So with all of that, what actually happens throughout the anime with Maru and Kiriko? We mostly just witness them wandering around and trying to gather as much information as they can to figure out what heaven is. But there are some storylines that are worth noting. The first one is Usumi and the Immortal Order. After Kiriko and Maru receive information about a place called the Immortal Order, they make a detour there because Kiriko thinks that the doctor operating there, who can supposedly make someone immortal by grafting a part of a man-eater body onto a human, could be the shady doctor they're looking for. They make it to the area where the Immortal Order is operating, and they get hired by the Liviumen, a group fighting against the Immortal Order and its supposed human experiments. Kiriko and Maru are to infiltrate the Immortal Order and kill the man-eaters they're supposedly raising underground. Eventually, Kiriko and Maru do kill the man-eater in suspended animation underground the headquarters of the Immortal Order, but after they do that, they get hired by the Immortal Order's head Dr. Usumi to help someone else. It turns out the Immortal Order isn't what it seems, and Usumi just builds prosthetics and people gather there to get help, and ultimately it was the Livy Human who ended up being the crazy power-hungry people. Uzumi brings Maru and Kiriko to the patient, Hoshino, who is barely being kept alive by machines and asks them to kill her. Uzumi explains that he is unable to kill her because if he does, by turning off the machines, she will turn into a man-eater. That's why he needs the Maru touch to end her life. Turns out, man-eaters are humans afflicted by disease that eventually kills them and turns them into man-eaters. Eventually, after they bring the patient outside one more time to see the sky, Maru kills her using his Maru touch. It seems like Usumi and this patient really loved each other, and an extremely distraught Usumi kills himself while holding her. Maru and Kiriko find them both, and in his hand is a button with the same symbol that's on the Kiru beam. The second notable storyline is Kiriko and Maru finding Takahara Academy. Eventually, they follow the symbol on the Kiru beam and Usumi's button, thinking there could be a connection and a clue to Maru's background, and they end up finding Takahara Academy, which uses the same symbol. They find an old, dilapidated Takahara Academy office in ruins, and read an old pamphlet that describes the outside world as hell. Thinking the academy could be described as the opposite, heaven, they decide to continue looking into it as a potential heaven and plan to check out the other facilities in Ibaraki and Nara listed on the pamphlet. And the third notable storyline is when Kiriko finds Robin Inazaki. At the end of the season, Maru and Kiriko make their way to Takahara Academy's Ibaraki facility, which is located in an area run by the Ministry of Reconstruction, a group attempting to gather engineers to reconstruct the old civilization, in which there are also conspiracy stories about people disappearing and getting kidnapped by them. While there, Kiriko finds Robin, who is the director of the mass filtration plant, which also happens to be in the same building that Takahara Academy's Ibaraki facility used to be in. A lot of horrible things happen, and Robin is definitely not who Kiriko thought he was. When Robin first sees Kiriko, he has a horrified look on his face, which makes it I seem like he's hiding something so that happened when Haruki and Kiriko and had the accident. We learn from Robin that the mysterious doctor's name is Sakuta, and Robin says he left the orphanage to follow him, but lost track of him and then returned to Funayama Orphanage, but it was already gone. Eventually, Maru saves Kiriko from Robin, who was assaulting her, and beats him up and scares him away. Maru and Kiriko also have a really touching moment at the end in which Maru helps Kiriko realize that they're not Haruki and they're not Kiriko, they're Kiriko, which seems to heal some kind of trauma there. 
We end the season with the Ministry of Reconstruction investigating Robin's disappearance and finding a locked room with a man-eater attached to a woman who has lost her mind. One possible explanation for this is as follows. We know that Robin keeps getting quoted saying that he's not going to let anyone else die. Haruki attributes that to his sister dying after the great disaster, but maybe by not letting anyone else die, he really means he's doing human experiments by merging humans and man-eaters to make humans immortal. Hence the woman locked in the closet. Rumors of this aren't out of the question. The Immortal Order was rumored to be doing this, and we know Robin had contact with them for a period of time. We've also heard him warn people about the mysterious Ministry of Reconstruction because they are kidnapping what? people. Maybe this is what? just to cover his tracks, but in reality, he's the one kidnapping them. Also, as he's assaulting Kirigo, he says, I'm just conducting a small experiment. So maybe he's used to experimenting on humans. Moving on to the second big storyline at Takahata Academy. Running parallel to what's going on with Kiriko and Maru, we get introduced to Takahata Academy and meet a group of children who live there with no exposure or awareness of the outside world. We meet Tokyo and her classmates, Mimihime, Taka, Shiro, and Anzu, who are in Tokyo's class, and Kona, who is in the class above them. Takahata Academy is controlled by an AI, Mina, that assists the academy with operational managerial matters, and other robots take care of the day-to-day -day teaching of the students. There are humans that are in charge of Mina and everything at the academy from behind the scenes, including the director, the director of the whole operation, Aoshima, the director's attendant and successor at the academy, and Sawatari, a doctor working at the academy who is close to the director. So what do we know about Takahata Academy? Based on a pamphlet that was found by Kiriko mid-season, we know Takahata Academy wishes to provide a space where one can live naturally without having to endure the burdens of personality, gender, physical ability, appearance, health, finances, and more. The Academy believes that society is flawed in the sense that even after so many technological developments, everybody lives in a state of enduring and it wishes to free people from that by creating heaven. What we also know is that the director of the Academy continuously talks about an arrival day or the day of fate, where something or some people are going to arrive at the Academy for the children. X day is six months out from the time we witness at the Academy. And we do know that most of the people working at the Academy don't even know what the end goal is other than creating heaven. However, one of the faculty members says, aren't we gonna like spread heaven to the outside too? The gardens turned out great after all. At this point, it is unclear what is meant by all of this. And an extra bit about the Academy that we got in the manga that was just barely touched on in the anime, the Academy has soldiers eight of them, awakened from suspended animation, whatever that means. What? And the Kiru Beam was introduced and demonstrated to the director and others at the academy for use by the soldiers. The director named it the Super Beam. So with all of that, there are four different groups at play within the Takahara Academy. The first group, the children. The children at the orphanage are very special and seem to each have different powers. They are born and created from Mina. They get called Hiroko by Mina, which is another name for the man-eaters, so they're probably man-eaters, or at the very least, somehow related to them. And these are some of the children that we get to know throughout the anime. First up, we have Tokyo. We follow Tokyo for the most part while at the academy. Her life free of want changes the day she gets a mysterious message that reads, do you want to go outside of what's outside? Tokyo looks exactly like Maru, and Minihime, Tokyo's friend, says, Whenever I think about how much I want to go outside, two people from out there come to save me, and one of those people has a face just like yours, Tokyo. Tokyo and Kona end up falling in love, and they have a child together. What is confusing, however, is that there exists two babies. Aoshima claims Tokyo had twins when faculty members are confused by the second baby, and Sawatari confuses Tokyo's real baby with the other mystery baby, so we don't actually know which one is which. Eventually, one of the babies is given back to Tokyo. We also see Tokyo unlock some kind of power at the end of the anime. Next we have Mimihime. Mimihime is Tokyo's classmate and has what seems like precognition or premonitions. She sees things that other people don't, like stuff that has happened in the past, and she sees things that haven't happened yet. Mimihime hallucinates seeing Kona as a man-eater while she's talking to him, which is good evidence that the children are man-eaters or will turn into man-eaters. Mimihime also has rabbit ears or something like that. We also have Shiro. Shiro is another one of Tokyo's classmates and he's skilled at mechanical engineering. He's in love with Mimihime and at the end of season one when they go outside of the outside, he tells her he loves her. 
Mimihime then snaps a button off of her uniform and gives it to him, which that's not the first button we've seen in this anime. Usumi died holding the same button, and it seems like unless they're introducing multiple buttons, this button has significance and is the same button, and Shiro is in fact Usumi just 15 years earlier. Usumi we know is skilled at making prosthetics and Shudo is skilled at mechanical engineering. This could also mean that the girl with Usumi dying from turning into a man-eater is Mimihime in the future. This could explain Mimihime's mysterious comment at the beginning of the season, whenever I think about how much I want to go outside, two people from out there come to save me and one of those people has a face just like yours, Tokyo. We know Mimihime sees things that haven't happened yet, although she can never tell if they'll happen in seconds or years from now. In this case, Mimihime as a child could be seeing something that happens 15 years in the future when Kiriko and Maru, who has a face just like Tokyo, saves Mimihime by killing her. We also know Mimihime's last wish before she died was to go outside and see the sky. We also have Taka and Anzu. They are two other of Tokyo's classmates. Taka has exceptional physical abilities and Anzu is skilled at dancing. Next up, we have Kona. Kona is older than Tokyo and the others and is the last and only one left in his class. He draws strange ass photos that look like man eaters and that possibly foreshadow other important things. And then we've got Taro. Taro is in the class younger than Tokyo, but has a body wasting disease and eventually dies from the disease. Sawatari says about the disease, well, if it was the result of having created a body with a full set of immunities, it is possible that all the children could develop it, and they don't have a cure for it. We also know that Mikura, the woman who brought Maru to Kiriko, also died from the same thing. After Taro was cremated, all that remains of him is a core that looks exactly like the cores of the man-eaters. We also have Cuckoo, and Cuckoo be climbing the walls with her hands and feet exactly like that scary fish man-eater is climbing everywhere with those hands. Another child at the academy is Asura. Asura is a student, I guess, uh, who is part of the first class of students alongside Kona. Asura knew what would happen in the future, could heal the children, and could fly, etc. Eventually, Asura committed suicide after they came to understand why they were born. What? Literally no idea what is going on with Asura, but their silhouette with their wings looks exactly like a drawing Kona made, and looks like the image that Juichi showed Kiriko and Maru when he's mentioned the strange flying humanoid shapes that were observed by many people They're before the, the great disaster. And finally, we have Oma. Oma is a student who is part of the newest class at the academy. Seems like she has the same hallucination power as the man-eater Kiriko and Maru fought in the parking garage in the town known as the Mortal Order. If you look into her eyes, you hallucinate your worst nightmare. A really quick note on that, if Mimihime is in fact Hoshino, uh, that means Mimihime's worst nightmare was exactly what happens to her eventually in the anime, which is very sad. The next group at play at Takahata Academy, the director. One of the first interactions that we have with the director is when Tokyo asks her about the outside world, to which the director answers, it's a filthy world crawling with wretched beasts. It is hell. At first assumption, it seems like the director is talking about the man-eaters terrorizing the outside world, and that what we're witnessing in the academy is going on at the same time as Maru and Kiriko's story. But on second thought, she could also be talking about pre-disaster times, because we know how the director and the academy feel about the way the world is, and they're trying to create a heaven separate from it. Besides creating heaven, the director has a second goal okay. of immortality. Go, 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 go. The director is in her 80s and fears she won't be there to witness heaven being created. Thus, she wants to free herself from the shackles of mortality to do so. The director wants Sawatari to perform a brain transplant in which her brain would be placed in the body of Tokyo's child and she would become it. She most likely chose Tokyo's child because the other children are susceptible to the disease Taro died of. There is already precedent for brain transplants in this world as we saw with Kiriko and Haruki. Plus, we learned that the receptacle for a brain transplant must be at least 13 to 15 years old, which Haruki and Kiriko were respectively. Speaking of ages, which is often brought up in the anime, so it's fair to say that it might very well be important, Maru is currently traversing the outside world as a 15 year old, which would make him a prime candidate to house someone else's brain. Anyway, since Tokyo's child is still a baby, the director planned to transplant her brain into Aoshima in the meantime until the baby grew to a ripe age. Thus, she promoted Aoshima as her successor to get things ready. The third group at play at Takahata Academy is Aoshima and Sawatari. 
While it might seem like Sawatari and the director are working closely and secretly behind the scenes, Sawatari and Aoshima are also forming their own secret plan. This plan, which is eventually somewhat called the Noah plan, is a plan to protect the kids and has something to do with opening the door to the outside world. For all we know, this plan is different from the director's plan and Mina's plan, which we will jump into shortly, and they seem to be just as confused about the explosions that happen at the facility towards the end of season one because they want to make use of the chaos to execute their own plan. And finally, the fourth group at play at Takahata Academy is Mina. Mina, the AI that assists and manages the academy, gives birth and creates the children. We do see non-human babies at the academy, so I think it's a pretty good assumption that Mina has birthed or created these babies too. Could these babies possibly grow up to become the children we see at the academy? Who's to say? It also seems like the babies could possibly be baby man-eaters because of the similar markings or symbol on both. Although it's not exactly the same markings, the babies literally look like tiny baby man-eaters, but again, it's not confirmed. It also seems like Mina has plans of its own. We witness this in various instances in which the AI hid things from the people in charge of the academy, like the glitch on Tokyo's test that asks the question, do you want to go outside of what's outside? The security cameras not showing Tokyo visit the creepy babies and not showing Tokyo going into Kona's room. And the sus test given to the children at the end of the season in which to reach the outside of the outside is your role as a Hiroko. No one at the academy seemed to be aware of this test being given. Plus, the explosions that happened right after that were definitely not part of the plan of any other groups at play. So what happens at Takahata Academy at the end of the season? At the end of the season, a series of explosions seems to occur around the academy and Mina shuts off. The explosions are thought to have been what the director referred to as the jeweled spear of the heavens. However, they're probably not because the director was just as confused by the commotion as everyone else. Four students, Taka, Anzu, Mibihime, and Shiro, leave the academy because they think the chaos is part of the test to get to the outside of the outside. Eventually, we see them on a boat leaving for a city, which is a good indication that everything we are seeing at the academy is happening before the great disaster. In the chaos, Tokyo is given her baby back as per Sawatari and Aoshima's plan to protect the children. However, the director horrifyingly tries to kidnap the child, and in defense, Tokyo unlocks some kind of power looking similar to that of a man-eater in a state of suspended animation when it plays dead, as we saw in the parking garage during the Immortal Order arc. So how is this all connected? We're gonna jump into some theories and possible predictions, starting with the timeline. Based on what we know so far, it's likely that what we see occurring at Takahata Academy is happening pre-Great Disaster. The last shot we see of Taka, Anzu, Mimihime, and Chiro on a boat shows them arriving at a city, and as we said earlier, it is a good indication that this is occurring before Kiriko and Maru's story. Additionally, if our prediction about Shiro being Usumi and Mimihime being Hoshino is correct, that definitely means the Academy storyline is happening in the past. I think we can also make an assumption then that Maru is Tokyo's child because he looks exactly like her. And if that's true, that means that the Great Disaster will happen shortly after what we see happening at the Academy at the end of the season, since Maru was born in the same year as the Great Disaster. The person Maru is looking for with the same face as him could be Tokyo or the mysterious other twin baby. Another connection that can be made between the two storylines is that Sawatari, the doctor working at the Academy, is the doctor Kiriko was looking for. One reason for this is the fact that the doctor performed a brain transplant on Haruki and Kiriko. Sawatari was supposed to perform that exact procedure on the director in Aoshima and eventually Tokyo's baby, so he definitely has the know-how to perform a taboo procedure like that. Additionally, we see him get hit in the head during the explosions at the academy. And oh, what do we have here? Sawatari has an injury that can possibly turn into a scar that looks exactly Exactly like the doctor's scar. When Kiriko asks the Immortal Order if they've seen the doctor, a person specifically says they haven't seen him because they would remember a scar like that. Hmm. Another thing that connects the two storylines are the man-eater slash Hiriko. We know humans with a disease die and turn into man-eaters. How this is related to the kids is yet to be confirmed, but all of the Takahata Academy children could possibly turn into man-eaters as Mimihime was going to do so if our predictions were correct. The children also share similar powers to the man-eaters, for instance, Oma. Oma could be the man-eater Usumi 
aka possibly Shiro, had below his facility since they both share the power of making people hallucinate their worst nightmare. Plus, as we mentioned earlier, Cuckoo's sticky hands are similar to the hands of the fish man-eater. But at the same time, if Shiro is Usumi, then he didn't turn into a man-eater and it didn't seem like he would, so maybe it's not consistent across all of the children. We did see when a child died, Taro, his core wasn't destroyed when it was cremated, so maybe those cores that are left over when a child dies eventually turns into man-eaters. A few other outlying cases we have seen related to man-eaters are First, Juichi's son, who is literally a man-eater and transforms between his baby self and a man-eater. But a big question here is what connection does his son have with the Takahata Academy? This could be a stretch, but if the boy is a man-eater, it could mean one or both of his parents came from the Academy. It's unlikely Juichi came from the Academy because he only recognized the Academy symbol from the building he tried to hide with his car. So then what do we know about the mom? We do know there are two mothers involved who were using Juichi when he he was in that weird walled community. And the only queer relationship we see from the Academy is between Nanaki and Iwa. This could be really stretching it, but maybe they are the boy's mothers who eventually died after they tried escaping with Juichi and the boy. Their silhouettes in the anime do look similar to Nanaki and Iwa, and the mothers give Juichi and the baby a keychain that one could argue looks like the robot teacher from the Academy. Another outlying man-eater case is Totori, the Hotel King. Who has a man-eater core inside of her? Will she eventually turn into a man-eater? Does she have the disease? Or is she just a human with a man-eater core? And again, similar to Juichi's son, if she has some kind of connection to Takahata Academy, she could be the child of two of the students since she was born after the Great Disaster. The first people that come to mind are Taka and Anzu since they both have dark hair and seem shipped up, but this connection might be a huge assumption we're making. And then the third outlying case, Mikura, the woman who brought Maru to Kiriko, died of the same disease that Taro died of, one that for all we know only impacts the children of Takahara Academy. Is this the same disease that Mimihime had that turns you into a man-eater after you die? If this is the same disease, then Mikura and Taro both would have turned into man-eaters after they died. And wrapping this video up with possible future outcomes. Honestly, like... <laughs> I have no idea where this could be going, but one thing I am worried of is Maru's quest of being a trap. Brain transplants have been brought up in both storylines and even the ages of the vessel for the brain has been specified, which just so happens to be Maru's age. Plus, if our assumption that Maru is Tokyo's child ends up being correct, then the director could have had her eyes on Maru for 15 years for him to house her brain. Maru's quest to find heaven could be a trap, and for all we know, Mikura could be a Takahata Academy fanatic sending him straight to the director. Especially if she looked at him coldly and didn't treat Maru like a human, the end goal of saving everybody could be a skewed point of view in which saving everyone means turning the world into heaven, which would achieve Takahata Academy's goal. Not sure how things will turn out, but I do think we should be wary and knowing Heavenly Delusion, some fucked up things are probably gonna happen in this game too. Let us know your thoughts and theories about Heavenly Delusions down in the comments. We hope this video was helpful and we are so excited for season two. For less watch some anime, I've been Vinny. I'm Molly. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.